please like and subscribe. Hello, Collective. Welcome to your reading. Collective, this is a general reading. You may not resonate with all of it. You might not resonate with any of it. But please remember, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one -one reading. Uh, so please take what you resonate with, take what you need, and leave the rest behind. Uh, you might get your own intuitive hits on this reading. Please trust your own gut instinct. Trust your own instinct and your own in, in, intuition. Many times I have listened or watched other tarot readers and I've gotten my own intuitive hits off the cards. It doesn't make the tarot reader wrong. It just makes the message that came through the reading to me, for me, specifically within me, about me. It didn't make the reader wrong. It just, it's just, you'll get your own intuitive hits. Trust them. They are correct. They are for you. They are about you. Okay. There are no dates on my readings collective. Uh, if you click on the reading and you resonate, it's yours. And I just want to say that tarot was not for everyone. Um, and I often liken tarot, tarot to the uh, spiritual path and to the, uh, to the path of Buddhism. Because tarot is a form of meditation. Just It's like Buddhism. You have to be in a specific um, place within yourself where you can hold the presence and the safe space while facets and reflections of yourself come in. Okay, and we don't sit in silence unless we have done some critical work upon ourself. You, you, you know, that is what Buddhism requires. Because <laughs> if you're in a hell realm, if you're still in a hell realm, you, can, you cannot go and sit in silence. You're going to be in agony. So you have had to do some groundwork on yourself that elevates your consciousness and your choices your choices of what you're going to be, be conscious of. And that requires doing groundwork. So the fact that you're here in tarot, that you've raised your vibration to come into the higher dimensions of tarot, tells me that you've been doing your work. So I commend you on that. And not everybody's doing their work. And those of us that are, it is having impact on the field. But at the same way, so are those that aren't. Oh, and the cards just exploded. So are those that aren't. But this falls into the dimensions of the natural law. And I'm not going to go there right now. That's a, that's a very deep, deep reading. But just trust that in the natural law, all things go to where they belong. All things go to where they belong according to their vibrations. Okay? Holy smoke. Okay, the cards are hopping. They are jumping out. I tried to do a reading earlier and I just was not happy with the reading. I totally deleted it. So I wanted to try, I wanted to start over again. Okay. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. I am so glad to have you on board. Welcome. And uh, my name is Jo, short for Joanne. And if you are returning, I'm so glad, I'm so happy. I, I Thank you so much. My channel is becoming what it is because of you. So thank you so much. Okay, creator, please bless this reading. Please bring in the knowledge and the wisdom of the Most High for the collective, for the collective's person. And for the cross watcher. Cross watcher, you could be dealing with the collective. This reading could be all about you. Okay. This is a four card spread. This is about you versus your person. This could also be you versus yourself. Very, very interesting. Okay. The first card comes flying out. The 
Queen of Swords in reverse. Ooh, Queen of Swords in reverse. So somebody is very cold hearted and very cruel. Somebody is very cold hearted, very cruel and very bitter. Now this could be seen, this could be projected onto you by the other person. So the first card could be your card or your person's card. The second card could be your card or, or your person's card. These two cards can be interchanged. The third and fourth card cannot be interchanged. They are locked in, okay? Can we have the second card, please, creator? So somebody is bitter, cruel, and cold-hearted. There is the next card out, the Ten of Wands, the Ten of Wands upright. Hmm. The Ten of Wands always suggests to me somebody has accomplished. They have accomplished something in their life. They are taking responsibility for their life, for their home. The turtles are often very burdened. They're burdened because they carry their home. They carry the hand they've been dealt. You know, it's kind of like the hand you've been dealt, I see it as your birth chart. The Kronos contract that we are all born into. We're born into the hell realm. This is the hell realm. The earth is the hell realm. And our first contract with the earth, with ourselves, with our collective is through our birth chart, through the Kronos contract and Kronos being the hell realm. So it's very often very heavy. It's very, it can be very hard, very, very difficult. Okay. So this Ten of Wands and this person is facing, oh, you're both facing each other. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So both of you are facing each other. This person has accomplished something in their life. They have come to the completion. There is a completion of something, but there is an accomplishment. There is taking responsibility, and oftentimes it can be burdened. I see this also, this is Sagittarius energy. This could be burdensome. Because when you take responsibility for all your wands, all your passions, you're taking responsibility for your birth chart. You're taking responsibility for the hand that you've been dealt. And the reason why it can be burdensome is because no one else carries the same hand. No two people have the same, well, they guess they can have the same birth charts, but that's by, you know, and the, it's very, very, very um, unlikely that the planets will be in the exact same de degrees and houses and all of it. But oftentimes, um, you're, the hand you've been dealt is your hand. It's your experience. And that's what makes it sometimes burdensome because it's yours. It's your experience. But the person that is opening their eyes to it is responsible, is ready to carry the burden of their own life, their own house. The tortoise never gets away from his shell. He never, he carries his shell, his house on his back. And I see the house as the language of the birth chart. So this person carrying the hand they've been dealt with them through the whole of their life. That's how it is. It doesn't mean you're stuck in the, in the hell realm for the whole of your life. You will always carry the foundations of you in you. You will always carry that. That will always be a part of you. You can't change that. But it's when you get into Kairos, and that's what I get, is this person's about to enter into Kairos. 
Kairos, Kronos is the hell realm. It's you don't have a choice. You're in survival mode. You're moving about your life in a survival mode. Um, sur 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 surviving. You're locked into, into the birth chart. You're not aware of where your choices are. And even if you are aware of where your choices are, you may not have the capacity to make those choices. You may only have the capacity to make certain sort of survival choices. That is the Kronos. But when you get into Kairos, Kairos is free will. Kairos, when you're in Kronos, you don't, you have a certain limited measure of free will. I mean, you know, um, when you're in Kairos, this gives you the capacity to recognize that not every day is the same. This gives you the capacity to recognize your choices within every given day, within every given moment. This gives you the freedom to choose. Often when you're in Kronos, when you're in your birth chart, and I'm getting that this person is in their Kronos. It was interesting when I was pointing back to Kronos here. Interesting. But when you're in Kronos, you don't have the freedom to move between your choices. You have some freedom. You have some freedom. But when you're in Kairos, and there's th three, three, three layers of seeing. Kronos, Kairos, and Cosmic. And Kairos is when you can move throughout your life within choices. Cosmic is when you rise into a higher perspective. Cosmic is when you see your life from a cosmic perspective. And you see, you achieve an antinomian perspective. Where you're not within the laws of good and evil, right and wrong, um good and bad, right and wrong, good and evil, God and the devil, you're, you're, you're within a certain choice of that. But when you get into an antinomian perspective, you see those dualities as no longer at war over your life. You see those dualities actually now working together. Even if they are at war, they're still working together for your growth. Can you hear that? And that's what a cosmic perspective is. So Kronos, Cosmic, and Kairos. These are the three layers of seeing. Okay. And Kairos requires a certain level of freedom and achievement, taking responsibility. You can't get into Kairos if you're blaming. You can't get into free will and sovereign choice when you're blaming somebody else okay but when you're taking responsibility for your life you are entering into kairos that's what this is so i see somebody entering into kairos and somebody isn't somebody is stuck in the chronos of their birth chart they are stuck they're a queen of the queen of swords in in reverse so somebody has failed to um, lead fairly. Somebody is uh, failing to lead fairly. And the third card has come out. The seven of swords in, re in reverse. Oh, someone's been exposed. Oh, someone has been exposed. Somebody wants to come clean. Somebody is rethinking their strategy regarding a, a situation between the two of you. So, oh my goodness. It's interesting because, you know, and this is Aquarius energy too. So sorry, Aquarius, you know, Aquarius always has really heavy cards, but um, not always. This Six of Swords is also Aquarius energy. But anyway, um, the Seven of Swords, 
Somebody is aware, both of you are aware, the deception has been exposed. The deception has been exposed. The, um, somebody has rethought their approach toward, and I'm getting this is because this person is facing this person. Somebody is rethinking their approach to the other person. Could be one of you, could be both of you, but you're both aware of it. You are both aware of, of somebody has changed their approach, has re, re, um, rethinking their approach to the other person. Oh gosh. Oh, 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 ouch, 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 ouch. Oh gosh. Oh, okay, somebody, there has been a truth spoken. This is the Eight of Swords. Somebody is cast into a prison. They are cast into their own inner prison. I don't think they're aware of this. I feel this person is not aware of what their actions have done to them, but they, they, they will be, they, they, they will be. Very interesting. Okay. So the eight of swords to me, when I see the sword and the stone like that, I see this as a, a and it's interesting that the, the hilt and handle of the sword is coming right from this person. So I'm feeling that the Ten of Pentacles, the tortoise here, whoever's card this represents, has said a truth that has affected the Queen of Swords so profoundly that it is it has kicked this person's authority out for, or to kick their legs out, the legs they stand on, the authority they stand on out, and they are bitter, they are angry, they are cruel, they're pissed off with this person. But this truth has is pinning this person. This truth has put a sword into the stone. There's a bird watching over this. So the higher dimensions, the higher spirits are guarding this. They are guarding this. See the spiral set in stone? What I see, oh my goodness. When I see the spiral put in stone like this this is a this is a conflict that is unresolvable this is a conflict i'm seeing this in terms of this is this is a conflict that has been on the earth for thousands and thousands of years and or and or and or could could be both both and um this truth has put, this sword has put a truth into stone that is set, that has exposed a conflict that cannot be resolved, that cannot be resolved. And, uh, okay, let me say it this way, that cannot be resolved the old conventional way. What is the story of the sword and the stone? that it takes a person with a pure heart to pull that sword out of the stone. And I'm feeling that the Ten of Wands, the tortoise, has thrust a truth into a sword, into a stone that has this person's power reeling. Oh, because, yes, because a truth was exposed. A deception was exposed. A deception was exposed and this person is aware of it. This person is aware of themselves. This it's oh, it's almost like this person has removed the garment that covers this person's eyes from themselves and they see themselves. They are pissed off. This person is pissed. Okay, can we see the bottom of the oh we the high priestess is at the bottom of the deck. This is the energy that is supporting the entire reading. And this is the energy that is coming in. Whatever has happened here, 
Oh my gosh, whatever has happened here is, is, is going to change. The high priestess is, is on the scene and I'm getting that. And look at this. She holds the spiral within her hand, the spiral. She holds the spiral. Spirals to me are indicative of cosmic, unending cosmic evolution. They're also indicative of conflict. So there's a conflict here because conflict, when you put opposites together, you get a, you get a spiral. We live in a spiral galaxy. We live in duality, but we also live in unity. We also live in unity and the unity is contained. The spiral is contained within the whole. The spiral is contained within the whole. Within the whole is within the whole is unity. The high priestess, according to the Rider White deck, the high priestess is seen between two pillars, one black, one white. The black one is Boaz, which is unity. The white one is Yakin which is duality and the high priestess holds the tension. She is the tension of both of those pillars, both of those polar opposites. She is the tension of it and she has no problem. She understands the value of the war, understands the value, not necessarily, I don't want to say the word war, but okay, let's say it. There's some sort of a battle going on here and she understands the value of the battle and she does not, um, and she understands how it serves and she can see the spirit behind it. Very powerful. Okay, creator, can we do some clarification? We do some clarification for the Queen of Swords in reverse. Why is the Queen of Swords in reverse? representing this person's energy. I'm just gonna have a quick look. Why is the Queen of Swords representing this person's energy creator? A spirit of truth has entered this, this conflict. Oh, a spirit of truth has entered this conflict and this conflict will never be the same. This conflict cannot stand as it has stood. This conflict is on its way to being resolved or just simply is on its way to being dissolved. Whatever this person spoke, has set into motion a karmic wheel, a wheel of justice. That's what I'm feeling, a wheel of justice, maybe for this person, maybe for whoever this person is representing. However, just came out oh, oh god the first card out the six of swords in reverse oh the second card out the king of wands upright and the third card out the sun in reverse oh my goodness so whatever has happened this person whoever the queen of swords is when I see the Six of Swords in reverse, this person is resisting, has a lot of emotional baggage. This is Aquarius energy. There also, there's a lot of unresolved issues and this person is resisting the change. This person is hanging on to power. It's hanging on to a power that is dissolving. That's what I see. And they can't, because they can't tell the truth, you know, this card to me represents the Greek pantheon of when Hercules or whoever left the land of the dead and had to pay the ferryman. Sharon is the ferryman. 
And this person had to pay Sharon, and Sharon takes them all with the fairy from the land of dead back into the land of the land of the living. But you can't pay Sharon anything. You have to uh, gold and money and dollars and silver is useless. It's useless. You have to pay Sharon with the truth, your truth. How did you end up in the land of the dead? You participated, this person participated in every step that got them into the land of the dead. How did they get there? And they are unwilling or incapable of telling the truth. The way I see this, if they tell the truth, they will lose their power. They will lose their uh, capacity to rule. They're facing this ruler is facing away from this person. This is also facing toward this card also too. So the fact that if they tell the truth, they are going to lose their leadership. This is how they feel. They will lose their leadership. They will... Um, their own vision of the big picture, their own perspective of the big picture will change. And because they can't tell the truth, because they're not willing to negotiate on their own vision of what the big picture is, they're, they're losing their contract. They're losing their contract. Oh... Holy smoke, they're losing not only their contract, because I see the crimson flag, I see this as the cosmic contract, the cosmic contract, you know, I see it in terms of the blood of Christ, the blood of the covenant, but when you don't tell the truth, you're not standing on the truth, you're not happy, when you don't tell the truth, when you're standing on lies, you're not happy. There's a possible broken engagement, broken contract here. There's a broken contract. I'm seeing that somebody ruled the other person with a corrupt form of leadership. And this corrupt form of leadership has been exposed. And this person is pissed. They're in hot water. They feel they're in hot water. Maybe nothing will happen, but whatever is happening is happening inside this person. And maybe they will lose their office. Maybe they will lose their title. Who knows? But there is something on its way out. Is there any more cards for this creator? Any more cards for this? Any more cards for the Queen of One? Let's see here. Queen of Swords in Reverse. And I'm feeling that what has been spoken and exposed has just happened or you're in the process of doing this now. Ooh, two more cards has come out. <gasps> oh gosh. The Ten of Swords upright and the world. This is, they are going to lose this contract. This is the end of a cycle. This is the end of someone's capacity to rule in a certain way. This is the end of power. Someone's losing their power and they're aware of it. This is their authority. This is their authority. Very interesting. Can we have some clarification for the tortoise, please, creator? Can we have some clarification for the tortoise, the ten of wands upright? Why is this card representing this person's energy? Ooh, intense reading. Oh, ho, ho. Somebody, I see David and Goliath. That's what I see, David and Goliath. 
Ooh, the two of pentacles upright, the queen of pentacles upright. Let's get all the cards out before I say anything, please. Three more cards came flying out. Okay. So this tortoise, I feel, was very overwhelmed. And it took them gathering their, their inner finances, their inner... Um, you know, really find, ex examining and exploring their natural resources in order to go up against this person. In order to release themselves from whatever this is, from under this person's authority. The Page of Wands. Ex exactly, very... Um, yeah, whatever happened, this person had to reach into their, into deep into themselves to bring out truths and physical, physical financing, physical, a physical situation, a physical form of currency exchange, energetic exchange. How do I say this creator? Some sort of a transaction of energy has happened between you two that kept somebody in their power over you and kept somebody under this person. And this, this exchange, this transaction of energy, that's what this was, the transaction of energy. It caused this person to lose their balance. It caused this person to feel overwhelmed on, uh, under this. This really wasn't fair. But this was set up for this person's, and this person if they choose to, but this was set up for both of you to prevail. And one person isn't and one person is. And this person reached within themselves to gather the strength and the energetic financing they needed to go up against their person. And they did. And they released themselves. This person has released themselves. They have won their freedom. They have won their freedom from a tyrannical leadership, a very cruel and bitter and cold-hearted person. With this is rapid growth. With this, this person is taking this freedom, going through a lot of rapid growth and looking ahead of them, a lot of expansion and looking ahead to know where they're going they're not they're not rushing in but they are definitely feeling into their new dimension of freedom but with that comes a sense of exhaustion with that comes a sense of tiredness and just exhaustion And also at the same time, because this is facing their person, I see this, this is the, the tortoise is tired. The tortoise needs a break. But I'm also seeing this as, oh, beautiful tortoises in a way, because you were so, I see this person is very humble. You know, I see this as the tortoise and the hare. Ooh, hoo hoo. The tortoise and the hare. This has come up in like another reading. I can't remember what other reading this has come up. But the tortoise has crossed the, the finish line. And I'm getting that they felt they were, they were stressed out about it. This person was stressed out about having victory over their person. Whoever this is, I feel this tortoise is an empath. 
and they have taken on so much of their collective that it has burnt them out. They're, they're, they're tired, but they were able to pull their power back from a very tyrannical leader. Can we have some clarification, Creator, for the Seven of Swords in, in reverse? What has been exposed? What has happened? Whatever has happened, yes. Whatever has happened, this person is aware that this person has pulled their power back. Whoever this Queen of Swords in reverse is likes to have power over people, likes to feel dominant, domination. That's the word that comes into me, domination, control, power. Ooh. <laughs> We have some clarification, Creator, for the Seven of Swords in reverse, please. Ooh, resistance, resistance, resistance. Okay. Top five cards. Interesting. Eight of Swords over the Eight of Swords. Very interesting. So, yes, whatever happened. You know, this person has had a sense of community with this person. In the beginning stages of your relationship, you both had a sense of friendship and community. But with this, with this truth that was spoken, with the deception that was exposed, it has put somebody in some very fast, mental, restless energy. It has stopped the flow of new, new, um, new inspiration coming in for somebody. It has stopped. It's, it's, it's kind of like, yes, it has stopped the blessing coming in over, over the relationship. The relationship cannot stand now. A house divided against itself cannot stand. And when this person, I'm feeling this person had this person in a measure of deception. And when, it, when, when someone's being lied to by the other person and they're not aware they were being lied to, the house can still stand because they're not aware of it. But, but, as I said, this person reached into themselves and pulled out the truth and exposed, exposed their truth, which put somebody's authority on their head and has stopped the flow, the blessing of the, the, the friendship. It is also released, and I'm feeling it has released this person out of an inner hell. And his, uh, this person <clears throat> brought in this truth, brought in, and it wasn't even that his release them. This, this person was coming in fearlessly and strong to release themselves from an inner prison. That this person's, and I'm feeling this person has, has, uh, how do I say this? I'm getting the feeling. What's the word? This person has kept a kind of power over you through, through their silence. This person was refusing to, they can't tell the truth. They can't tell the truth. 
they're not illuminated with the, with the truth. And it kept this person kind of bound, unknowingly bound. But this person knew it. They, they, they could feel it. And they went in. Somebody has gone in, and I feel it's this person has gone in fearlessly. Um, oh, my goodness. It's taken action. Taken action fearlessly to release themselves out of someone else's out of someone else's authority. Very interesting. Creator, can we have please the clarification for the shadow dynamics? And I don't think that this person's aware of what they have done. I don't think this person's aware that they have bound this person in a truth put a sword into a stone that is so penetrating that it has penetrated this person's defenses. Oh, ouch. The truth takes no prisoners. The truth takes no pr prisoners. Let me make that clear. The first card out came out sideways. The six of pentacles. So the Six of Pentacles is about charity and generosity and sharing. And that seems to be what is, what is now going to be one hell of a challenge now for whoever, um, who, whoever has been cast into an inner hell, whoever been, has been bound by the truth. And they're only bound by the truth. The truth takes no prisoners. And they're only bound by the truth. They're binding, them, they're binding themselves. And I'm feeling that this bird is themselves, is their own consciousness, their own psyche. And they don't know how to pull this sword out without losing power. Can we have some more... Clarification, please. And that puts this person's generosity, their fairness, their, their um, charity, their capacity to have a charitable perspective, very challenging now. Because they are losing, I'm getting they are losing a measure of authority, confidence and authority with, within themselves because a the truth has been exposed. Oh, I'm hearing a person is trapped. Oh, they are trapped within their own actions. They are trapped within their own truth. Oh, 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 oh. They have trapped themselves. Someone has trapped themselves. And I'm getting it's the Queen of Swords, and that's why she is so pissed off. This person, it doesn't have to be a female, but this person who was in a position of authority has trapped themselves. Oh, ouch. Ooh, very interesting. Very interesting. The next card out, the seven of swords. Oh my gosh, the seven of swords is in reverse up here and it's upright down here. So the seven of swords, again, this is deception. It's tactics, it's trickery, it's strategy. This is Aquarius energy. This person, their deception and their trickery has been exposed, but I don't think they're aware of the magnitude of, of this yet. Neither are you or whoever this is. No, neither is the tortoise. They're not aware of what they have exposed. They're not aware of how deeply they have impacted this other person.
resistance. Let go or be dragged. And that goes for the cards too. Oh gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes, yes. Holy smoke. Holy smoke. Okay. So the Hierophant in reverse. The Hierophant is uh, somebody exercised very foolishly. Uh, this person is very vulnerable now. This is the Hierophant is Taurus energy. So somebody uh, in their fixed energy, somebody's got fixed energy, their fixed energy of a person. And look at that. The fixed energy showed up right beside the fixed energy in reverse. So somebody's fixed energy is very vulnerable and the fixed energies in someone's life, maybe both of your life, this could be the fixed energy in the tortoise's life too. Somebody's very vulnerable. Um, because of an action that they have taken that has also, you know what, I, 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 okay, let's take a look at this honestly. When I look, this just came to me from the Old Testament about when Elijah exposed Jezebel. And when he exposed Jezebel and Jezebel fell to her death, uh, her own false prophets threw her out of the window and she fell to the streets and the dogs, I think, ate her. I can't remember what exactly what happened. But anyway, she was killed. And Elijah ran to the caves and hid. He was scared. He was ashamed. You know, I see this as, you know, the Lord, the creator, the cosmos, the universe uses people that are very damaged. <laughs> people, and we're all damaged in some way. Okay, let me make that clear. We're all damaged in some way. Okay, and the creator will take people that are not, you know, confident. And he will take them to bring down a tyrant. And Elijah, what did he do? He ran and hid in the caves. He thought people were coming to kill him. No one was going to kill him. But he was so afraid of it that he ran and hid in the caves. And the creator had to send ravens in to feed him. To, to kind of coax him out. It's okay, you can come out. There's nobody coming to kill you. And this is what I see is somebody is very vulnerable and a little scared. I see this as this person's energy and this person's energy because somebody has acted foolishly. Somebody's okay. We come back to the tortoise and the hare. You know, the collective is in the stands watching the race and the collective is aware that the hare has always had the... Um, advantage the hare has always had the advantage over the tortoise because the hare is faster the hare runs faster he's intelligent you know etc etc and but the hare is also very arrogant it's conceited is so entitled ooh ooh entitled because of his advantages always having the upper hand and this person this queen of swords in reverse has known this and I think that whoever acted very foolishly was this queen of swords in their own authority. They took for granted an advantage that they had, not knowing that we're at the end of a procession, not being aware that the end of the procession and the pillars of power that are collapsing all over the world is also affecting this person's life. And this person speaking the truth, exposing a deception, Exposing a deception. Ooh. And what that has unleashed into this person's life. And this, and so it's been socially accepted that the hair has always had the advantage and the upper hand, and the hair acted foolishly. And now the tortoise is crossing the the finish line and the hare acting foolishly can see that 
and it's like I say, rounding the last corner to the straight stretch to the finish line as he watches the tortoise cross over the finish line. And the tortoise wasn't competing. The tortoise in, in this sense, in this context of the cards, this tortoise was not competing. This tortoise was trying to be true to themselves, be honest with themselves, take responsibility for themselves, but not so much this queen of swords. This queen of swords I'm seeing deflecting truth off herself onto others. Well, look at you, look at them, look at him, look at her, but not saying you're right, look at me. You're right, look at me. Look at what I've done. I need to take responsibility. No, they're not doing that. And that's why they are pinned under the, to the earth by a truth. They are pinned unto the earth by a truth that this tortoise threw, this tortoise threw a truth in releasing themselves, taking an action to release themselves. And this truth is now in stone. This person is pinned to the earth. And this is the end of a cycle. This is the end, I'm, I'm believing, too, of this person's, possibly this person's leadership as they are. It doesn't mean they can't change their, their leadership, but they're going to have to go through the catharsis of releasing an old power that is no longer true, that the cosmic energies is no longer supporting. And this is true all over the planet. This is why so many people are, are exhausted right now because so many people are trying to uphold an old energy that is no, no longer supported on the planet. It's like when systems end and I'm hearing like the creator, like pull your energy out, pull your energy out lest you go down with this. And this is what is happening. And this person didn't pay, pay, pay attention. I think this person thought they were above this that, or that it was all woo-woo or that it's not real or not happening, but it just happened. It just happened. With that, with the fixed energy that is now vulnerable, this fixed energy, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, these are the four fixed energies of the chart. And I'm getting this is the fixed energy could be of both of your charts, but it is, it is, it is, it is changing. It is the end of a cycle. This is change of the fixed energies. Ooh, someone has released themselves. As I said, somebody has released themselves from an inner prison, from feeling trapped and somebody else is now trapped. Ooh. Very interesting. And the last two card, the last card is the two of wands. So there is, there is, um, how do I say this? Behind the scenes of your life, of someone's life, there are your archetypes. Your own unconscious subconscious is now in the act, in the, in the stages. Your archetypes within the unconscious of your own, your own life, your own psyche is now shifting. It's now shifting. Somebody's going to be leaving home. You're, the, you're not aware, both of you, this could be for one of you or for both of you, but somebody is leaving a place that has been home for a long time. This person's holding the world in their hands. This could be this person, the collapse of power, but I, I'm seeing they're going to go through, through some stuff here. This person's got to go through a catharsis to come to the end. I'm seeing that this person too has got to be able to rest also before they can leave. This person is exhausted, utterly exhausted. Okay, powerful reading. Holy smoke, very fast reading, very efficient energy that came through this reading. Okay, creator, can we have a Native American oracle card to instruct 
what do you want the collective to do with this knowledge now that we've pulled these secrets out of the cards? What do we, and that's what arcana means. Major arcana, minor arcana. Major secrets, major, minor secrets. So now that we've pulled the secrets out of the cards, creator, what do you want the collective to do with this energy? Here we are. Oh. <gasps> The 33. Oh, this is shaman energy. This is shaman energy. I was not expecting that. Holy smoke. We're going to go by the book. The shaman. Number 33, the shaman. This card means liberty oh what did i say someone has released themselves from a trap and somebody else has been trapped too so queen of swords in reverse this uh, shaman message is for you also the shaman walks between worlds moving with ease between the visible and the invisible worlds and thus sees connections via his journey to spirit he has experienced many things suffered greatly and learned much his wisdom and dedication allow him to communicate with spirit on behalf of others and bring healing to a people or an individual he leads the living along a path of personal control that leads to true freedom and accompanies the dead to their next path freedom from from the physical world Ooh. The message of this card, true freedom comes through self-knowledge and discipline and understanding of the world and compassion or service for others. The key words of this card, liberty, freedom, ability, guidance, devotion, discipline, sacrifice, and suffering for a greater good. The time this card speaks of is dependent on the seeker's will very interesting so this queen of swords can release themselves out of in this this inner hell that they are in now but they have to choose liberation and choose to see themselves clearly this person i'm seeing has released themselves has been whether they were aware of this or not but they were employing shamanic energy and they have released themselves. They were employing shamanic power and they released themselves from an inner hell, an inner prison. Their, I don't feel their intent was to cast this person into a prison. I feel their intent was to release themselves and to liberate themselves. And they have. Now they can enter into rest. 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 You need to rest. Okay, this has been a very powerful reading. I'm going to leave this here, Collective. Thank you so much for tuning into this reading. Um, if you are the tortoise, job well done. Uh, you need to rest and just uh, enjoy what comes next because you are entering into a whole new contract, whole new cycle. You're at the end of a cycle. The Both of you are. You are at the, en the end of a cycle. Okay, and that states it right here. So whether or not you're aware of this, the battle is over. You are done. You have released yourself from the bondage that you were under with this Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords in reverse, you can release yourself too, but you need to see yourself clearly. You need to take responsibility. You need to examine your relationship to power. Oh, that's what just came in. You need to examine your relationship to power, how this power has affected you, how this power has affected the people around you, and adjust yourself accordingly regarding if you need to go get professional help, if you need to maybe go see shaman, you know, very powerful okay thank you so much you guys for tuning into my reading if you're new welcome aboard i'm so happy to have you part of my beautiful soul family 
if you are returning um thank you so much my channel is becoming what it is because of you because of your um sub sub subscriptions your comments i love all the comments i read every comment i take them all to heart and i thank you guys so very very much all right you guys you guys take care have a beautiful day and i'll see you see you guys next time okay bye